Protect your privacy online with the best VPN for gaming, ExpressVPN. And visit expressvpn.com slash gillymaster linked in the description to find out how you can get three months free. So it's been almost two months since the Los Santos Tuners update released, and by now we have already gotten all the drip feed cards and pretty much all the drip feed content itself with the new contracts. I know there's some events that are still in the files and like liveries and clothing and stuff, but that's kind of secondary to the main bulk content of the update. But in this video, I kind of want to just reflect on the update as a whole and talk about the good parts, the bad parts, and some things to improve on going forward if, say, we get a part two of a tuner's update. So let's begin by talking about the good aspects of this update, the cars. Everything about the cars, I would say, was a major win in the tuner's update. The customization, the new rims, which we'll throw into the car category. Although the way that you unlock them is a bit iffy, but we'll talk about that later. The ability to stance the car through the interaction menu, low grip tires for drifting, and just the car models themselves. They all look amazing and seem to have a higher attention to detail than previous DLC cars. Not to mention they all look very similar to their real-life counterparts, so they did a really great job in that department. All the new cars are part of the tuner class, and now that we have all the new cars, in my opinion, the class is quite balanced for the street and pursuit races. Aside from the Futo and the Warner, those are more drift-style cars that have a hard time competing in these new races. When the update first released, the Calico was by far the best car, and that was basically the only car you saw in the races, which got boring and kind of lame. But as time went on, we got the Vector, the Sultan RS Classic, and the Cypher, and now you see it less and less often, and those cars that I just mentioned give it some great competition in the class. The auto shop and everything pertaining to the auto shop is another positive about the update. Getting more garage space, even though I wish it was more than 10 slots, another place to customize our cars on our own property. The miniature business of customizing customer cars and delivering them is good for passive income. The exotic exports, which I'll probably never complete the entire list again in a day, is cool. And the contracts were surprisingly great. The pacing and the payouts feel fine how they are in my opinion, and they only take around 20 or so minutes and you get paid around 150000 to 300000 if you do the Union Depository contract. Obviously it doesn't come close to Kaya Perico, but they're also much less involved than Kaya Perico, and add a bit more variety to only grinding Kaya Perico until the end of time. The street races, I actually really enjoy them. At the end of the day, they are just regular street races like we've had, but they do feel different with the shortcuts and the different props scattered about. The shortcuts give the race an added layer of skill and map knowledge to the mix. For example, let's say you're on the beachfront map. If you aren't aware of the shortcut through the little strip mall area or don't know how to properly drive your car through that shortcut, you're going to get destroyed by someone who does. It's a lot more dependent on how you drive your car and less on if some dickhead player spins you out at the beginning of the race. Now let's get into some things that this update missed the mark on, I feel. And some of these things aren't entirely bad. For example, the first one being the car meet area itself. The idea of having a place where you can drive around cars in an inside track without worrying about getting blown up is very good, and I really have no issues about the area itself where you can drive the cars. But for the most part, I feel like the car meet didn't meet my expectations. It's advertised and designed to be a social space where you can challenge other players to mini races. The problem is that you never find anyone to actually do anything with in there anymore. It's pretty much always empty in public lobbies. So then your only options are to do time trials because everything else requires at least one other person to start it. You can't do sprint races, you can't do head-to-heads, you can't do scrambles, which are the fun parts of the car meet. In that aspect, the update suffers the same fate that the Arena War update did, where you require other players to play the content. The elements of the car meet that are great additions though are the prize ride and the test track vehicles. Being able to test drive a vehicle before you buy it is something that I wish all cars had in this game. But even having the 3 in the car meet is a plus, and the prize ride is another free vehicle that you can get per week just by doing some challenges. The only problem is that some of those challenges require, say, winning sprint races, and like I just said, no one really plays sprint races anymore, so most of the time you have to find a friend to boost the wins off of, and that's just not fun. And the way I see it, there's two ways to fix this problem. Number one, which is probably not likely at all, but that's to increase the payouts of these races so that more people actually want to play them and participate in them more than they do now. Or we have the second solution, which would be to let us race the AI drivers. The car meet has many different AI cars that are fully customized and they just look sick. And the only reason that they're there is for show. Imagine how cool it would be if we could go up to one of the drivers and challenge him to a race in the car meet. The single player of the game already has races that you're against AI in, so I don't think it would be out of the realm of possibilities. Another part of the update that I feel missed the mark is the pursuit races. I do like the concept of these races, it reminds you of the old Midnight Club unordered races, it's just that GTA's mechanics just don't bode well for a race like this. The cops don't chase you as much as they just spawn in front of you, 
And if you're in a lobby with a lot of players, the lag and desync breaks the collision physics and turns the cops into like static walls, which is not fun to deal with at all. They end up being more frustrating than enjoyable because of it. None of this is really the fault of the developers though, it's just the mechanics and netcode of GTA that causes pursuit races to not be that much fun. I guess it's really just the age of the game and how the AI works that's at fault. Personally, I feel like a better version of the pursuit races would be to have the players be the cops, like have a certain number of people be the racers and then a certain number of people be the cops. At least then it would feel like more of a pursuit rather than the cops are spawning in front of me and trying to spin into me. And let's not try to act like these races aren't just a bunch of demolition derbies to begin with. Like if you play a pursuit race with randoms, you're going to get crashed out. The major thing that draws this update back though is the reputation system. This was their second chance to get a new progression system done right, because the arena war system was so horribly implemented with its RNG leveling, the slow progression that rewarded spinning the wheel and winning AP to level up rather than playing, and of course requiring other players. The carbon rep system only does one of those things better, there's no more RNG leveling, you know exactly what you get at each level. Other than that, it's still way too slow to level up and it requires other players to level up doing the activities. I've already made a whole video on the reputation system so I don't want to go into too much detail here, but I think a massive improvement to the car meet rep system would be to up the amount of rep earned across the board so that leveling doesn't feel painfully slow and just unrewarding, and then allow the earning of reputation for completing all activities in the update, not just racing. So that when all is said and done, winning races is still the fastest way, but you'd still earn rep by doing other things in the update like contracts so you don't burn yourself out racing 24-7 if you just want to level up. And I feel like if it were to be changed in this way, that the update would be much more positively received in general. Overall though, the Los Santos Tuners was a good update. Out of 10, I would give it a solid 7. It's got some good content, but ultimately there's a few things hindered by poor design choices. It does bring back more of a GTA feel to the game though. The contracts definitely feel like I'm playing GTA again, and there's no flying bikes in the finales, which is great. If there's going to be a Tuners update part 2, we definitely need more incentives and ways to level up reputation though. That's the main thing that they can improve on for sure. Maybe some more activities in the car meet as well to try to incentivize people to visit it more than just walk in circles to earn rep while AFK. Let me know what your guys' thoughts on the Tuners update are in the comment section. What would you rate the update out of 10 and why? And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP related content. Huge thank you to all my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can add these to the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.